before this video starts, just remember the Battlefield giveaway. We only have so many days left. May something, it's coming up. Look 18. At this. Boom, 18. Look at this. Double, 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 double. Look at this. Look at this. Rich rules, dude. It's never going to get us. Hey, go, broken. go buy this merch. Side by side blog parts.com forward slash merch. Buy the merch. Get entered in for a chance to win Battlefield. You want the merch. You want the machine. You want everything. Done. Get it. Smell Boom, this. Got them. All right. You can smell like 2J, dude. dude. You can smell 2J in it, dude. <laughs> All right. On to the video, boys. All right, boys, you know and love the Buffalo. You've seen it. This is our Long Travel Pro XP build. It's got all sorts of great stuff. All stuff. What you haven't seen yet is this. <laughs> RR. Finally, a real demo from Can-Am. A real demo. I tell you, dude, back in 2012, dude, when I first got in the industry, I'm like, we'll never get anything from anybody. And, you know, 12 years later, we still don't get nothing from nobody. <laughs> And here we are, we got this from Can-Am. Uh, <laughs> 2021, anything is possible. But yeah, we got it here, it's a four-seater. Didn't expect that, but here it is, a four-seater. It's got the live, or it's got the Smart Shock uh, technology on it, which we're pretty interested about. I gotta be honest with you, I'm pretty interested about it. Um, so, um, tell us a little more about this, uh, Richard. Oh uh, yeah, 2021, Can-Am, X3. XRS Max. Big dog. Smart shocks. Double R, 195 horsepower. <laughs> you know the deal, big dog. Yeah, the hood wouldn't denote that, but after some digging, it's actually an RR. Uh, so yeah, this is a used unit from their demo fleet. Uh, it had some Modelo cans under the seats that we had to take out. I mean, uh, not good. You know what not they good. say, dude. <laughs> it's Modelo time. <laughs> <laughs> took it for a short ride yesterday <laughs> with the family for Mother's Day, turns out. Uh, yeah. Uh, shocks were flashing at me a bunch, yep. um, primary bearing smoked on it, but you know, at the end of the day, it's not going to really stop us from ripping it out here at the track. And that's what Nick's going to do, right? Yeah. yeah. We, we haven't spent a whole lot of time in uh, X3 four-seaters. I mean, we've had the Buffalo for quite a while now, done a lot of cool things with it. Interested to see how this thing's going to stack up to it. I mean, you know, this thing has a lot of aftermarket stuff on it, so not exactly an apples to apples comparison, but sure. you well, get the deal, you know the deal. She's pretty close. I mean, both 72 inches, both have, you know, a lot of uh, travel. A lot of travel, you know, magical shocks, blah, blah, blah. I'm pretty ready to blah, blah, blah these things are on the track. Yeah, Straight I think. Up. I woke it, up today ready for this. If you're at the point of buying either of these machines, you don't really care too much about the amount of money. So to turn this one into something like this one, it's going to require a lot of extra money. But again, you're already blowing a bunch by having this. So let's just really compare long travel versus long travel. 72 versus 72. 72 versus 72. He's right. Yeah, so uh, if you don't know a lot about this machine, it's got an HCR long travel counter. This is their elite suspension. It's got just a spring kit in the front with the stock valving, just a spring kit in the rear with the stock valving, so the front's a little soft. Uh, it's got Simpson Seats BCF cage. It's black, which they didn't actually make this color. Or maybe they did, but it had stickers on it. Anyway, regardless. Regardless, I mean, this is, if if Flaris had made a 72-inch freaking Pro XP, it would be this. So here That's we go. That's what it would be. We, we did that for them, so now, you know, <laughs> we're going to do the test. Hey, we're going to put in the work. We're going to do the... The R and the D, you know? <laughs> <laughs> ripping and the dipping, dude. The ribbon and the dip. <laughs> so which one do you want to drive first? Man, so uh, should we baseline it with the buff or should I just get in the Turbo R and uh, the Turbo RR, I should say. And uh, you know what? I don't know. We'll figure it out in a second. You'll, you're going to see that. But the plan on here today is what? Just to go over them, I think, hit yeah, some go jumps. Over them. I'm gonna, so I'm just not going to go off the, you know, I'd like to get some seat time in this sucker. And, you know, there's going to be a lot more to that coming. So, uh, coming. And then uh, we're going to, I'm going to just try, I'm just going to feel it out. I'm just going to go around, I'm going to drive around, and then I'm just going to go wide open on the track and see what happens. I'm pretty uh, comfortable with the track now. The okay. track is excellent. That's good. So and, one uh, little difference that I noticed in the spec sheet, the rear has only got 22 inches of travel, which is weird. Yeah. And then also the ground clearance is pretty low compared to this. So, so would you say that this is set up from the fact that this is factory set up right here? This isn't yeah, good. not adjusted. Not adjusted. Hmm. And it's on 30s compared to 32s, sure, but. Sure, sure, sure. Yeah, I don't know. Cool car. Spent some time on it yesterday. A lot of fun. The, the smart stuff is, is actually pretty good. We haven't really had a failure on the Polaris stuff. Yeah, so to have a failure is... on these quickly kind of sucks, but I'm sure they got it figured out on the ones this that they're actually selling too. to people. How it actually, it's, it commands it at the bottom of the shock. Yeah, so it actually commands rebound and compression on this one, whereas this one, it's only compression. It's just compression. But it's just weird. Will that matter? I don't know. I don't know. We'll find out. You know, I spent a lot of time in uh, uh, the flare setup, and I'm pretty happy with that setup overall. I'm pretty much 
all the machines I've driven it, whether the Turbo S or the Pro XB, it seems to work pretty badass. So, be interested to see what this is like, especially having, you know, the, the high speed and the low speed and all the, you know, magic. Yep. That they supposedly talk about. Well, let's load you up, dude. Get you in here. The Wendy's logo is still haunting us. Dave must Did be watching. Did bring it closer? I swear it looks closer. I thought it was at that one before. I don't know what happened. This is something else. I don't know but what's anyway, going on. Last time Nick Seuss was in next week. He had a great time. I was out here witness that, but yeah, he had he a lot of good things to say. Did claim it was better than his, which at the time his was pretty bunk. Now his is totally fixed, but we'll see. All right, he's immediately going 2,000 miles an hour. That car is really quick for a four seat. Jeez Louise. I mean, say what you want about Nick Seuss. This guy can drive pretty much anything. Into the dust bowl. I did notice some interesting clunks coming out of that machine too. Looked at it, didn't see anything. He is really <laughs> freaking giving it, dude. Yeah, he doesn't care about that wheelbase being 9,000 feet long. This is going. This is as long as a Suburban, just FYI. Oh! Wish we could have seen that a little better, but. All right. Is he just ripping two? Yeah, you know, I don't really know what he's ripping. I will say it'd be nice to have the machine in one piece for tomorrow's trail ride, but who's to say, you know? Wow. All right, Matt, first lap. Oh, fuck. How can he see anything? On dust NATO out here. Yeah, we to get the race unit water tank burning on this thing. I mean, stat goal of mine. I'm not gonna be able to see the big double here again either. Dang it! Looked better that time. Is honestly hauling, dude. <laughs> I've lost him. I've lost him. There he is. Follow that same uh, bird line at the end there. That's pretty good. What's good about this too is that if we break anything, we have about 10,000 spare parts for this machine. So we got that going for us. Jumping pretty good for a forest eater. Getting a little tail hop over here, but not that much. For a machine that long, not bad. Alright, he's trying to hang the tail out over here so we can hit this full speed. My gosh! <laughs> My gosh! Especially having fun because he just keeps going. That's a good point. Typically when he doesn't like something, he just stops after the first lap. Right. What are we looking at for about lap time so far, man? Best 
Uh, yeah, best time. 106? That seems really quick. It's a long track. Nice. Gave it out there, bud. Wow. <laughs> <laughs> what are your thoughts on this big dog? Man. This thing. So when I first started, I had it in sport. And it handles everything really, really well. Like there's still, I think that's because the car is so long. Like there's still a decent amount of body roll, which I was sort of surprised by. And then I'm sure these tires might be a little soft. I don't know, whatever. But the way it handles is really, really good. Like it handles so good. And then again, having a four seater, you really can't feel what's going on behind you. So I feel like that in itself gives you confidence to just push as hard as you really want. Like there's <laughs> nothing, I can't, you know, everything up front is doing all right. I don't know what's happening back there. It's like a whole different zip code. Whole different zip code. I got to say too, I think they might have... I think they did something with the steering because the steering on this is yeah the assist it has a higher assist motor on these big dogs it does yeah on the four seaters or are you saying all the new ones i think the xrc comes with it as well and i don't know about the uh, other new models but the four seater definitely has a higher assist this is excellent yeah like it is really really good it's very like the weight is there so you it feels like you have feedback i you know it's i don't know if it's more simulated feedback but like it, it has weight in the in the steering wheel. It doesn't feel like you're just you know pushing around a little bit of water, <clears throat> and it's uh, very responsive. Power feels really good. In terms of lap times, cooler car. <laughs> what was the uh, best lap time, Matt? Uh, best lap was a 106.7. 106.7. 106.7. Yeah, the Seuss. So anyway, so then I switched to Sport Plus. And Sport Plus, you can definitely feel uh, the difference. Like, it definitely cuts off the body roll, but it almost might be too stiff. Like, when I came over that last one, I, like, I felt the front tires clip, like, the, the bottom of the jump, you know? Okay. And then, like, coming around a corner, like, you could feel, like, it wants to pop up a little bit more. Just Interesting. Just it's so much stiffer. Okay. And we're sitting pretty low, too, so. This is a neat car. This is a neat car. The 4C uh, life. Interesting life. Yeah, the 4C life is definitely uh, it's a weird thing. I wonder what it'd be like in a two-seater. But as far as the shocks go, they uh, I think they do more work than you realize, you know? Yeah. Like, you almost don't notice they're doing anything. It just works pretty well. Well, that's interesting. Good that to hear. That is interesting. One thing about this that, you know, I don't like, okay? For instance, pretty much any Polaris product, you have this. And if you want to see what it's doing, you just look on your screen and it tells you where it's sending the stiffness, right? Right. I don't know, you know, I have a Comfort, a Sport, and a Sport Plus. I don't know what it's doing <laughs> past that. <laughs> yeah, there's no indication anywhere. Even the Talon tells you a little Even more than Talon, this. Even the Talon, yeah. And the Talon is abysmal in terms of uh, gauge cluster, so. But yeah, the star of this is just how it, you know, how it, how it handles and how it puts the power down. I, I'll be I'll be completely honest with you right here, right now. <laughs> Let's I hear prefer it. a stock Can-Am over any of your guys' cars. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, because we cooked them, dude. I mean, we, we, I'm glad you like stuff that works as a design instead of stuff that's blown up, dude. <laughs> yeah, this is, cool. is yeah, it's, it's pretty cool. It's classic cool car, you know? It's classic cool car. Well, those were some hardcore laps. I say you uh, hop in the Buffalo, give her as much 110 as you can another thing too right okay. before we jump ship <clears throat> the amount of, like the how relaxed you are driving this car is pretty shocking to me yeah there's no drama going on here no drama llama dude we need him out here we, need we him do out need him out here yeah. it's just like i mean there was times i was one-handed you know? <laughs> that doesn't seem safe anyway all right well let's get this uh giant limo vest out of here let's yep. go let's go start some other stuff come on well, Rick, I'll be honest with you. I know that X3 is going to be faster on the track. Calling it, huh? Yep. 
It's just got a lower center of gravity, shorter tire, a little bit snappier acceleration. There's almost no way the Buffalo's faster. Oh, you put Nick Seuss in his home product and he finds a way to make something happen. I don't know, I wouldn't rule him out. It's a good point. We'll see, we'll see. I know it's got an Evo exhaust on it, but you really just can't beat the sound of that car. It sounds so good. Real mean. Just flying too. <laughs> Nick is a psycho, man. I think this has a better turning radius too. Yeah, see how he doesn't have to check up there? Wow. better but was it quicker is the question i don't actually know we all come down to the lap time and matt made a pretty good point when you roll this jump here that you can't make one that uh, frankie hasn't fixed yet it really affects your lap time Ooh, jeez louise i mean it looks freaking great Big heavy 32s on there, that thing is handling so good. <laughs> I can't get enough of these machines jumping, dude. We're talking like a ton of flying beast. Yeah, that did look better out of that corner. That did look better for sure. There we go. Just hauling. Even for having 64 inch valve, like that car is working pretty good. It's not really slamming the front too hard. No. Just beasting, dude. Yeah, that thing on the sandlot was a weapon, man. Yeah, you were doing a great job in that car. You're keeping up with Nick in the 2C yeah. Pro. Like, that was crazy. All right, no more basketball on this one, buddy. There you go. on that one. Woo! Big oh, dog, dude. What do you think? Oh, there's... Oh, there's... Ah. What do you think? Wow. Just two completely different machines. 100%. Totally. 100%. This seems like the thing that we run into whenever we compare a Razor to an X3. They yeah. just do, they get to the same point yeah. incredibly differently. It's so, uh, it's so weird. I mean, this car is, you know, like I was saying in that one, like there's no drama in that one, not much going on, but I feel like in this one, it's just like you're in a, like you're riding a Bronco, you know? <laughs> Maybe a Buffalo. Riding a Buffalo, dude, and I've seen a Buffalo. They're big girls. 
this no it's <laughs> this sucker's tight like number one number one the turning radius yep. on a pro is so freaking good it's so much better like you can if you want to cut at any time you can cut no problem yeah we noticed that in the 180 going into the the, the tabletop here <laughs> in the yeah over there like yeah. it just it does such a good job you know, the tire's a little rounded off, whatever. I mean, they should still cook, you know. I feel like I could turn it in the, you know, and it actually grips, which, you know, allows you to go through. Jumping in this, this feels so much flatter. It's so much flatter. Like, I feel like I go up on all fours, and I land on all fours. Like, with that, yeah. it seemed like it wanted the nose a little bit more. At least that's how it felt while I was driving it. Like, with this, it just, it pops, you know, it pops. And I feel like Polaris has nailed that with, like, that's, I... 100% has to do with the freaking dynamics like when I used to have my freaking uh, my 1k like if you weren't on point with the braking and the throttle like you were going to have a bad time and like once you get in the turbo s or this or whatever I mean it doesn't matter what size the jump is it's just gonna handle it really really well um, this definitely sat up a lot higher so you know yeah the CG is probably yeah, higher on this it definitely feel it feels a little bit more tippy for sure it didn't it look more planted. tippy though yeah it like, did look more planted really it like not I more planted but it looked planted for what you're working yeah. with yeah. yeah like I could feel like I you know that does sit oh, quite a bit lower so I feel like I could come in the corners really like, really hot you know yeah I and noticed like, that coming in off the double over here you'd come into this corner a lot hotter on the x3 and just basically turn yes. whereas this you had to break yeah, and then turn pretty hard to, uh, to get it in um, Oddly, this feels a heavier. Like it feels like you're 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 slanging around a lot more weight. Could be the tires. The are, yeah, the tires, and then I mean, this one has a cage and the HCR stuff. You know, it's actually beefed up. So, but it's still like a it's a you know it feels like you're putting in more effort, but it also it's still pretty easy to drive. Like I said, still like you know at times you just you know one handed it, and then it's very predictable as well. You kind of know exactly what it's going to do. Yeah, that's interesting. Well, I guess it comes down to the lap times, Matt. Yeah, what where are you at with the lap times? Hey, do you think you went faster? Or? I don't know. Maybe. Yeah, I, feel I don't like actually I know. I could come either. up to like this. I, I'll be honest. It was pretty much wide open. Yeah. So I think the steering radius really helped. Yeah. On this. Interesting. So, before, with the X3, you ran a 106.8. Uh huh. That was your best lap. This one, best lap. 104.3. Wow. Wow. No kidding. That was your last lap. It was way better than the rest. Yeah, and that wasn't the one where you basketballed over here either. Did you guys see that? I hope oh, nobody We saw definitely that. saw that. Call that slam dunk, dude. You know, I was <laughs> taking her to the hoop. So I, it'd be interesting to run that one more time. I was doing a little bit different lane, but I still think, you know, like I feel like I could put this where I want it to go a little bit faster. Just you know, gives yeah. me a lot of confidence. Yeah, the turning radius, I mean, that was, Huge. like Matt said, very visible from over Huge. here. I mean, every every lap in that X3, you blew through that berm at yeah. the end there. This thing, you were just cutting inside of it, so. Yeah, and that's something to consider, too. Not everybody's going on a track, but what you are sure. going to do is go on tight trails. Yeah. And that machine is a b little bit longer, but if it has a worse turning radius, too, that's, like, doubly bad. Yeah, you and know? then you remember what I was talking about, too? Like, I don't feel anything that's going on behind me on that one. Right. Like, this one, and I've said this before, I said it when we first got this car. Like, this doesn't feel like a four-seater. Like, it feels yeah. like the back end is right there. And, I, you know, it's a good thing and a bad thing. I mean, it's a good thing because you know exactly what's happening in your rear end, but I guess there is no bad thing about it. Like, you're one with the car, you know? Yeah, I, I mean? think the bad thing is big, tall dudes like me trying yeah, to fit in the back. Which I, the back. I've done in both cars, and honestly, there it's not that much worse in this car. My knees yeah. do hit the seats worse in here, but also, it's not like I'm enjoying the back seat in this either. Like, yeah. they're both not super great, so. Yeah, sure. I mean, they're not really made for large-sized people. Both, yeah. I mean, take away from both. Like, they're both, like Leo was saying, like, they get you to the same place. It's just how you want to get there. It's very yeah. weird. Like the driving dynamic of this is so different than the driving dynamic of this. Ever from everything, the steering input, the way it feels around the track, the way it jumps, the freaking the way the motor comes on. Like that's such a, it's such a quiet like just a shh motor, and this yeah. thing is just such a like a it's scream it's just screaming like it's yeah. just. Rah, bah, <laughs> yeah. You could tell that too immediately when we took off. This thing, you know, obviously it's got an exhaust yeah. on it, but it was still just. Bah. I mean, the ones we've had in the past, even stock, they're yeah. pretty loud. Like, pretty astonishing how loud they are. 
Yeah, so I mean, just to caveat again, anybody who's trying to bring up, well, this one's built. Yeah, sure, it's all we got though. And honestly, I anticipated a two-seater. And so we probably could have had something two-seat in a razor flavor that would have compared to that better. Very good but, point. Very hey, good point. what are you gonna do, you know? This is, hey, this is the cookies we have. Either you eat them or you let them on the table and go stale. You do the math. The yeah? rats come and get them. The dude. rats will come and get them. And we've had some rats in that freaking shop. He's right. <laughs> I've seen him. I've tried talking to him. On the scram. Yep. What but, I think uh, we should do though is. Uh, you guys want to drag race them? That's right. uh, 200. What is it from the factory? 200? 200 horsepower? Is it 195? 195, yep. And then this one with the tune is. It was 182, right? Stock. Well, with the tune. Going, no, it's like it's in 200s. So it should 200. be a pretty close race. Yeah, I think the tires on this are going to be the, the real. The equalizer. The beastalizer. The beastalizer, Matthew. <laughs> Matthew, I'm trying to tell you something here, dude. <laughs> I'm listening. Hey, I'd like to uh, introduce you guys to uh, Matthew Baba. He's uh, our new... <laughs> Why Matthew Baba? What's dude, that? It just looks good on paper, dude. Okay. Uh, all right, let's get the drag racing going. Let's do it, boys. All right, all right, all right. All right. Yeah. Well, the moment you've all been waiting for, freaking beasting out here, dude. X3 XRSR versus the Buffalo, stage three Evo. Here we go. Yep, yep. Looks like the X3, looks like the X3 got out quicker, but the Buffalo kind of stayed with it. it. Seems like uh, on the top end it was trying to catch up to it. I don't know. We'll have to see what Mike Reed says. But that was uh, a lot closer than I thought. Yeah, yeah. That X3 so, is fast. Yeah. Oh yeah. Yep, yep. X3 is a lot faster, man. I'm not yeah. surprised by that at all. Yeah, it definitely. It lights up so much faster. Lights up faster. It's a lot lighter too out of the box than the Pro. Like the X3, it's a strong chassis, but they have a lot of thin, really high strength metal on that thing. Whereas opposed to Polaris, they just kind of go for Full thick, piece. not super high strength, but very thick metal. Yeah. So we'll see. Maybe we're gonna go again here. Here's the problem. You give you give Rick something to, to drag race, you're not gonna get it back. It's gonna be ten minutes. Pretty much done, dude. <laughs> All right, well, we'll see you guys a little later. <laughs> I would say tiebreaker, but X three's won every one of them. Not like incredibly different though. The buff does have like a. 50 60 pound spare tire in the back too which i didn't really think too much about but <laughs> well and then you know so it's running 32s it has some bigger bfgs on it that one's running you know 30, 30 so gearing's yeah. lower anyway yeah we'll see you do that to say that's pretty expected from my opinion though x3s are fast dogs for a four-seater, this thing kind of rips, dude. Yeah, it feels really good. Yeah, I'm honestly. I'm pretty impressed, honestly. Yeah. Good machine. Like, you're not adding that much weight when you go to a four-seat with these things. Yeah. I think it only weighs like 1880 or 1800 or something like that. Yeah. Yeah, not a whole lot back there, I guess. Yeah, pretty um, wild. It looked cool, though, seeing these two limos. How did uh, the Buffalo do, Matt? Uh, see, I'm used to X3, so this thing definitely seems a little bit laggier on takeoff. Yeah. Uh, by comparison, but still feels pretty fast. Obviously, it's not as fast as that. Right. Especially, yep. I think 30s probably helps on that. Right. This is probably a little heavier. So. Yeah, I think these are like at least 100 pounds heavier out of the box. Plus, this cage is heavier. Spare tire. These tires are way heavier than stock. Plus, Matt, he's like 260. So. The guy, dude, he had <laughs> at least 75 chicken nuggets today. It was so weird. I told Matthew, please. Slow down, man. Slow down. Matthew Baba, please take her easy, dude. Punched me in the face. Stole my nuggets. <laughs> you can't trust this guy. So, tomorrow, Rick, what are we doing, buddy? Uh, we're going to take both of these rigs up to our favorite riding place, St. Helen, Michigan. Trails of America. No, yeah. He's right. No, he's actually right. We looked it up in a dictionary. It's in Trails of America. That's pretty interesting. Like, every time we go to St. Helen and then we go somewhere else in the world, we realize how good St. Helen is. So we're pretty lucky to have that trail system close, and uh, it's going to be a good spot to test these things. So I'm not sure what's going to be better, but I think we'll both, we'll all four go in each one and really see what it's see what it's like. Yeah, oh, and it's nice good. just to be able to take it there. I mean, we know the trails. It uh, allows for uh, 
more fair comparison, I guess. We're not just taking them to a bunch of random places and yep. putting them against each other. We know the trails. We know what to do there. Adds up. Good stuff. Good stuff. Well, I guess we'll see you uh, guys in the next video tomorrow. Two days from now. Whatever. It'll be our tomorrow. You're two days from You're now. You're going to see it this week. He's what he's trying to say. Yeah. For sure. It's a good point. today. Monday. Today's Monday. We got a video coming out already today, okay. later today. So later this week. This will be Wednesday or Friday. You'll see the video. Yeah, whatever. What else? You guys got to figure this stuff out, though, as far as getting over to SideBySideBlogParks.com and buying limited time merch so you can win Battlefield. If you think these things are cool, imagine having Battlefield in your garage yeah. every day for the rest of your life. It could happen. You just got to buy the limited time merch. That's it's a that fact. simple. Fresh closet, fresh machine. Wow. Fresh light. Think about it. <laughs> Whoa, wow. dang. Fresh closet, wow. fresh machine. That's a good promo. Yeah, I know. You've got that uh, pretty much nailed it on the head. Imagine if, like, the entire world ran out of uh, power, you know, like electricity went out. Well, you wouldn't have to worry about it because you have the light bar that was made by Douglas Butterfield himself that'll light up your entire city. Not only would you be winning that machine, you'd be a hero. So you just got to do the math that way. <laughs> but those shirts are tight, and it's coming close, so you guys should uh, probably get in there as soon as you can because... They're yep. gone. It's going to be gone. May 18th. Wow. Midnight. Holy moly. EST. You said this last time. Buy now or buy never. Buy now or buy never. I was going to drop that. You treated me on that. Sorry. Good work. I thought you forgot. <laughs> no. I did a lot of things. Glad you didn't forget that. That's Say it again. Important. Say it again. Buy now or buy never. That's key. It's crucial. Yeah, we're not coming back out with these shirts. Like, that's it. No, I'm done with these shirts. I'm done with them. So... I'm, them. I'm still pretty into the shirts. But. I mean, I'm into the shirts. What are you but. trying to say? I got the shirt on right now. It's some good shirts. Forget him. Forget you. You're going to want these shirts because they're never going to come back again. You know, if you want to go down in history as wearing the shirts that existed at this time, this place, by Richard himself, then you're going to want these shirts. That's and good also, point. the shirt, the machine. Who doesn't want Doug's machine? Mike Reed wants it. We told him. Scram. Get. Really appreciate you guys tuning in, watching these videos, liking, subscribing, donating on Patreon, buying the merch we were just talking about, buying the parts. All helps keep us out here doing this fun stuff, having sweet buffaloes, getting these demo units from Can-Am. Wouldn't be happening without you guys. And uh, if you think this is cool, man, wait till you're about to see what happens next. You see, we're missing somebody here. His name's Douglas Butterfield. Okay? Yeah. I'm going to say no more, but big things, big, big things. There's a saying that goes like this. When oh, Doug is away, the kids will play, dude. Uh, Think about it's, uh, it. It's pretty much uh, to a T this week. Uh, you're going to like what you see. Yeah. Someone's definitely not going to like what they see. <laughs> <laughs> that's going to that's gonna be a Douglas for sure. Uh, oh, well. All right. See you guys All next right, time. See you. Bye, Nick. Bye. Bye, Matt. Peace. Bye, Mike. Peace. Oh, we're doing it to me? Come on now. <laughs>